Yeah, so uh, I still haven't found my camera's memory card. Anyway, I have a question for you. Let's say you're controlling this red square and you don't have a double jump. What would happen if you press the jump button right now? Would the red square A jump, B fall into oblivion, C turn green or D all of the above? If your answer was any of these then you're wrong because he would actually explode. Okay, but seriously, you know he would just fall into oblivion. But that's not supposed to happen, he should actually jump, otherwise you'll think the controls are unresponsive. This is going to be a quick video with 3 tips on how to get a juicy jump for your 2D platformer. And if you stick to the end, I'm pretty sure the last trick is one that you haven't seen before. Or at least I haven't. We'll take a look at this situation and a couple of others and fix them, cause that's what a tactical programmer does. A while back, I saw a Twitter thread by Mehdi Thorson, who is one of the developers for Celeste, and in that thread, there were over 10 game field tricks that they implemented in Celeste. I took note of those tricks as well as some of my own tricks for later videos. I'll leave a link to the thread in the description. The first trick that a technical programmer would implement is short and long jumps, which you already did in my first video. Check it out, link in the description. Let's start with the one I talked about earlier. It's called hang time or coyote time. Like that one cartoon about a coyote that runs off a cliff and just hangs there for a while before falling. This game field trick allows you to jump a short time after leaving a ledge. In our movement script, we're going to declare two float variables, hang time with an initial value of 0.1 and hang time counter. Whenever we are grounded, we'll say that our hang time counter equals hang time. And when we're in the air, we'll start decrementing our hang time counter. And when we want to jump, instead of checking if we're grounded, we'll check if hang time counter is higher than zero. And inside the jump function, we'll say hang time counter equals zero, just so that it doesn't jump twice. And now we have hang time. Next up is jump buffer. I have a question for you. Don't worry, no pop quiz this time. Again, no double jump. What would happen if you press the jump button right now? Well, you won't jump because you're not grounded. Let's fix that. This trick follows the same principles as the previous one. First, two variables, jump buffer length with an initial value of 0.1 and jump buffer counter. When we press the jump button, we'll say jump buffer counter equals jump buffer length, else we decrement the jump buffer counter. And instead of checking if we press the jump button, we'll check if jump buffer counter is higher than zero. And now we have jump buffer. Okay, those two tricks were easy enough, but the last one definitely isn't, especially because I'm coding it myself. But don't get discouraged, because if you don't understand the logic, you can just copy it. Alright, the next trick is called jump corner correction. If we place our character here and jump, everything's okay. But if we place him slightly under this platform, I'm pretty sure you know what happens when he jumps. Let's fix this. In this situation, what should happen, or better yet, what I want to happen is for the player to get pushed to the side so that he doesn't bonk his head. So after a long day of brainstorming and trying out different ideas, I couldn't do it, it's too hard, I'm gonna quit game dev forever. But don't worry, in the next day I was feeling refreshed and ready to tackle the problem again. And after coding everything, it worked? The way I did this is using a sort of detection system on top of the player's head. In this case, I used four ray casts, two on each side of the player's head. These two on the edge allow the player to get pushed, while these two prevent that movement. Allow me to explain with examples. If we place our character here with both of the left ray casts under the platform, he bonks his head. But if only the edge ray cast is under the platform, he doesn't. Same thing for the other side. Two ray casts, bonk. Edge ray cast, no bonk. There are also these two additional ray casts that start where the inner ray casts end and go to the left and the right. They are what measures the distance that we need to move our character. And this is the code.
and these are the values that I use. When adjusting the length, you'll want to extend it pretty far, so that the script detects the corner early and it won't stop your jump momentum. And remember, when adjusting the offset values, only change the X values. If you change the Y and Z values, you'll get some weird results. Amazing! Who knew a jump could feel this good? Now this 2D platformer series is finally getting interesting. Too bad we only have 2 more videos left to finish. Anyway, the next video will be about wall interactions, i.e. wall grab, wall slide, wall run, wall jump and ledge grab. But these aren't your generic wall interactions, they're different, more suited for an action 2D platformer. You'll see what I mean in the next video. Anyway, if you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to this channel, I'd really appreciate that. And I'll see you guys in the next one.